Hey everyone, behind me here is my Project 2003 Chevy Suburban 2500. This episode marks the first in a three-part series where I show you how to upgrade the old 18-year-old paper speakers to something that sounds a whole lot nicer. So today, I'm going to show you how to install some high-quality component speakers into the front doors. So, as I mentioned in my introduction review video on this truck, shortly after buying it, I had upgraded the old-school AM-FM cassette CD player with a modern Pioneer head unit that was Bluetooth capable. The stock speakers leave a lot to be desired when it comes to sound quality, so it was time for an upgrade. Now, a quick note before we get started. This, as I mentioned before, is an LS package, so it does not have the upgraded Bose sound system that you would find in an LT. This has speakers only in the front and rear doors, and they're powered by the head unit. So that makes installation a lot more simple, and for now, I'm just going to power the speakers with the Pioneer head unit. The speakers that I decided on for the Suburban are Infinity. Now, Infinity is a pretty legendary name in car audio. In fact, when I was much younger, um, I actually used to install car stereo for a living, and um, Infinity was always known for being a very nice high-end speaker that provided really crisp and clear mid-range and high frequencies. So the front doors of the Suburban have a single 6.75 inch mid-range driver and a factory dome tweeter. So I decided to put these COPPA series 60 CSX component speakers in the front doors. It comes with a mid-range six and a half inch driver as well as a separate dome tweeter and a crossover that helps distribute the frequencies correctly to each speaker. Okay, here is everything we need to get the six and a half inch uh, COPPA series component speakers installed into the front doors of the Suburban. Now there's a couple of supplies that you will need um, that do not come in the kit. Um, you will need some 18 gauge speaker wire. You will also need some zip ties of varying sizes and a couple of crimp connectors. Now there are multiple mounting options for the tweeters. Um, we are going to use um, these that have a threaded back on it and a lock nut. Uh, makes installing it really nice and easy. As you'll notice here, it also has a bevel on the inside so that you can actually angle the tweeter towards the driver's ears. Um, there's also multiple sets of screws that come in the kit. Um, you'll need some of those as well. As far as tools go, you can see what we need here. Uh, obviously, you want to have a drill driver. It certainly, it certainly makes life easier um, and faster. Um, you're gonna need a set of needle nose pliers a set of clippers, you will need a marker pin, um, a 764 drill bit, a little pick tool. You'll need two different sockets. You're going to need a 7 millimeter, and as you can see I have the little driver bit so that it can go into the drill. You'll also need an 11 millimeter socket. You'll need a Phillips screwdriver. Um, a little screwdriver like this certainly helps with uh, unclipping the uh, plugs for the wiring. Uh, you'll need a crimp tool and your trusty little interior trim removal tool. Uh, also, you will want a Dremel. You'll see why um, when we mount the tweeters, I'm going to modify uh, the factory mount plate. So you'll want a Dremel for that with a couple of different bits. Otherwise, that is everything you need on how to install these speakers into the front doors. So let's get to it. Okay, here we have the six and a half inch uh, mid base driver. Uh, very nice looking unit, uh, heavy magnet. Um, one of the nice things I love about it is, is that it's got these set screws uh, put to put the speaker wires in instead of having like crimped on clips. Uh, just a nice touch, uh, very well made piece. Um, and uh, excited to uh, hear how they sound. Uh, before we get into it though, I wanted to do one quick thing here on the bench before we put these in. Uh, they provide some foam that have uh, adhesive on the back and we want to put that foam along the outer edge of this so that it makes a nice cushioned seal against the door. So to do that, I'm actually going to use the speaker grill and I'm just going to take this here because I want to protect 
the speaker. I don't want to just lay it flat on my bench. So we're just going to set this in here so that it protects the foam of the speaker while we put this on. And then we're good. Okay, the first thing we need to do is we need to get this whole door panel off. Uh, unfortunately, the speaker grill you see here does not come off from the outside. It's held on by clips from the back. So we can't just remove this and get to the speakers. For more details, be sure to check out my final video in this series where I show you how to remove both the front and rear door panels. Okay, so as you notice, um, you can see that it has um, the mid-range speaker here in the door. The, it actually has a tweeter that's actually mounted uh, to the door panel, to the back side of the door panel. So we'll get to that in a minute. First thing we'll do is replace the door speaker. Um, it's actually a 6.75 inch speaker, um, but six and a half inch is the typical aftermarket size, but it'll, it'll fit right in there. So uh, first thing I'm gonna do though, is I'm gonna show you um, just for science purposes here, uh, this speaker. The foam around the outside is completely torn all the way around the speaker. This is a very, very common um, thing that happens to these speakers. I mean, it's 18 years old. As you can see, the sound quality is not going to be so good. To remove this speaker, it actually, you can see it has screw holes, but they don't use screws. They actually use these clips to get it out. So what you want to do is it has on the top side here, has this little piece here. You push down on that and then pry it and then it comes right out and then it has little tabs in the bottom and it will slide right out um, it has a little clip um, that uh, is pretty easy to um, unplug it and there is your speaker component systems like this um, are a little extra uh, step to install everything um, because we got to get this crossover in here and we've got to wire it up the first thing we're going to do is take this crossover and the top just kind of pops off like so and you can see all the heart of it here all the wires go in through these little holes and you just strip the wires back and put them in and then screw down the little set screws to hold everything in place now it has mounting holes for it but it's pretty tough to do that in a door there's nothing really to mount it to um, i can't put it on the outside of this because then the door panel won't go back on so what we're going to do is kind of a simplified solution i'm going to take it and put it inside of here and i'm just going to zip tie it uh, to these wires okay as you can see i stripped back uh, the wires here and they're ready to plug into the crossover on the input side um, the factory color code for the driver door is tan and gray Tan is your positive, gray is your negative. And we're gonna put it here onto the input side. So we just need to uh, get in here and open these little clips up. And done. All right, and the next thing we wanna do is we want to put in the tweeter wires next. So get some of your 18 gauge um, speaker wire here. Just get a piece of it that's maybe a couple feet long just to be safe. Okay. And then next is the woofer wires. Now you'll notice I'm using pretty standard speaker wiring when you have aftermarket wires, typically gold on one side and silver on the other side, gold is being used as positive. All right, now we have our wires attached to the crossover. So let's go ahead, we're gonna fish it back through here and we are going to mount it. Now you'll notice I have two different lengths of wire here. That's gonna help me know which one is which. The longer one was the tweeter wire. The shorter one's gonna go to the mid base driver. So now what we're gonna do is grab a couple of zip ties All right, now the crossover is in there. You know, I would love to mount a little plate here and do it really nice, um, but it's just not necessary. As you can see, this is not gonna go anywhere. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we are going to install our mid base driver.
Okay, so we're getting ready to put the speaker in, and as you can see, it fits up nice in this hole, but there are no pre-drilled holes in the door. Um, I'm actually going to drill individual holes, so just grab a pick, like so, and you wanna mark where the holes are. Okay, I'm using a 7 uh, drill bit. The screws are eighth inch, but this just gives a little extra bite. Uh, to the um, to the metal Now one little thing is don't tighten up the first screw Before putting the other ones in at least get every screw started Otherwise, they may not line up. Okay, the mid-range speaker is in. Okay, here is the back of the door panel, and as you can see, here is the factory tweeter. So to remove this, um, what we need to do is we need to go to the back of the door panel first because what we have to do is get these little tabs loose so that we can get the grill off of the front of the door panel. And then as you can see, there are two nuts holding on the tweeter. So the first thing you do is just grab a pair of pliers, a little needle nose, something like that, and just bend these little tabs back like so. They're like thin metal, so they bend pretty easy and you don't have to really worry about breaking them just get them so that they're straight and so that that whole thing will just pull straight out. Now, one little thing, you can see this black piece of like tape or something like that up here. That actually hides a couple more. So you have to kind of reach up underneath the, the power window switches and pull this back like so. And then you can see that there are two more tabs up here. And get those out like that. Okay, now that those are done, now we're gonna take these two nuts off. So you need an 11 millimeter um, socket driver to get them off. Now just be careful and go slow. It's a metal um, nut that threads onto a plastic stud. And again, the plastic can be brittle and sometimes these things can break. So when you remove them, just go slow. Okay, now the tweeter is loose. Okay, now we're around here to the front side. So this comes off pretty easy now that those tabs are pulled. You just kind of put your fingers in there and this whole grill will slide right out. And there is your factory tweeter. Now, we're going to utilize as much of this mounting plate as we can uh, to mount the new tweeter on there because as you'll see when I remove this, the hole is quite a bit bigger than the Infinity Tweeter. So we're gonna need to make a modification to it. Okay, as I mentioned, um, I'm going to reuse the factory tweeter grill. There is a quicker way to do this if you want, if you don't have the time or a Dremel. The cup that the Infinity Tweeter mounts in that has the swivel so that you can angle the speaker, it actually fits in here really nice over here to the right side. It's actually just about the right size. You take this nut that comes with it and threads it on from the back and you get it on there really tight. It'll hold it on really nice. The biggest drawback is that even with the grill back on here, like in sunlight, you can see this hole. So it looks, it looks kind of sloppy, but um, that's why I'm going to use the grill. Okay, here we have our factory tweeter um, that we're going to reuse this mounting plate. So as you can see, it mounts here on the back and it has little clips that are on here, but there's also like kind of some glue and stuff. You just get your little clip screwdriver like this, just a little pry screwdriver, and then you can just start prying around the um, base of this. Okay, so now we have this and what we're gonna do is, is we're gonna mark a template around this and we're gonna cut it out.
Okay, here we have everything we need to uh, get these tweeters mounted. So what I'm gonna do is put this in um, and thread on the, the nut onto the back, but I'm gonna put it on loose uh, to start out because um, I wanna wait before I tighten everything up until I get it into um, the car so that I can get the angle right on being able to adjust the mounting angle of the tweeter. Now, the, the tweeter goes into this cup. As you can see, there's two holes on the outside and one slot in the middle. The speaker wires go through in the, either of the outside holes, doesn't really matter. Then you have this little square piece here um, and it's threaded inside of there. That goes inside this slot and then um, that gives the tweeter the ability to swivel so that you can angle it towards the driver's ears. And then what we'll do is we'll take this little set screw that they provide and it has a little washer and we'll put that on. So that's pretty much how it's going to look. Again, this is going to be behind the door panel, so you're not really going to see much, but it's just a much cleaner looking installation. Okay, here is the tweeter uh, mounted on the uh, factory mount plate, and we're going to go ahead and install it. Now, a quick note, it doesn't really matter the orientation on this. This is universal and will fit either way. Okay, this angle looks pretty good. I like the, the orientation on that. That should aim up towards the driver's ear. So let's go ahead and get this mounted. Okay, so we got the mount tweeter mounted up. Let's get these nuts on and secure it. And then we can finish the, uh, the set screw on the back of the tweeter. Okay, and then we just wanna make sure that the, the tweeter is angled up as much as possible before we tighten up this screw, and that's it. Successfully mounted. Now, before I put the grill on, I'm gonna take a real quick second just to clean this up. I mean, I might as well, I have it all apart, and I will get, you know, get rid of some of this grime that is just built up over a quarter of a million miles. There, much better. Now time to put the grill back on and just line up the little clips so that they slot right through. And then just bend the tabs back. And that completes it. Okay, time to put the door panel back on. We got our tweeter mounted um, and it's ready to go back on. The only thing we need to do first is we need to connect it to the wires that we um, attached to the crossover. So as you can see, I just used a couple of crimp butt connectors um, to my 18 gauge wire. And then we will connect it to the red and black wire um, that comes off of the tweeter. Um, pretty obvious red positive, black negative. Okay, the Coppa Series component speakers are installed in the driver's door. A quick note before we start on the passenger door. The color code is light green and dark green. Light green is positive, dark green is negative.
Well, that wraps up this video on how to install some Coppa Series six and a half inch component speakers into the front doors of a 2003 Chevy Suburban. If you haven't already, please check out my second video in this series on how to upgrade the speakers in the rear doors. Thanks for watching, everyone.